and it makes my skin super soft i love this largest sources of waste out there that are in our oceans <laughs> Welcome back to Zevalia with me Zeva. Have you ever thought of going at least low waste or at best zero waste for your bathroom toiletries and amenities? Well in this video I would like to share with you my tips on having a more low waste or zero waste bathroom. Personally for me I haven't gone full zero waste yet specifically about my bathroom habits but I am more low waste now and I hope that what I've been doing will inspire you if you haven't already to live a more low waste life. So let's start! Okay, so this is the bathroom area. So let's see what's on this sink. Okay, so this is the external bathroom sink. As you can see, it's very, very simple. I don't have a lot of things anymore. <laughs> I usually have a, a lot of products and everything, but now I'm trying to simplify and just uh, use the core things that I require on a daily basis for cleansing. On this corner are the things that I use to cleanse my face. This corner here are the things that I use to cleanse my mouth and my teeth. And then over here is my hand sanitizer. And as we scoot over here, these are the things that I use when I wanna make my facial masks and waxing. To wash my face, I usually use this face bar, it's a soap bar. It's super good. It took me a while to find a soap for the face that really fits my skin type and also to my liking because some out there makes your skin dry and I think you know the area around the face is very sensitive so you really need to find a soap that works for you and I'm super glad that I found this and do try out to use a face bar because literally it's zero waste and there's not much packaging. If you haven't seen my previous video yet on how to make your very own cotton pads, do check it out. So I use these cotton pads to wipe away my makeup and how I wipe away my makeup is by using this DIY coconut salve. This is actually an alternative to petroleum jelly. If you want to know how to make this, it's also on my channel. I will also link down both videos in the description box down below so you can make them as well. This is super, super effective and I always, always do this on a daily, cleaning my makeup off using these two here. This here is a muslin cloth by Liz Earl. Well, you can just use any cloths really for your face that is soft in texture like this. So I sometimes use this to give an extra scrub to my face whenever I wash my face. Or even, for example, I would put the soap in the middle and wrap it up and then set it with the water and then just go throughout my face like that to give an extra sudsy experience and maybe you would want to try that out too by using a facial cloth like this. If you've seen my earlier videos, I also do oil pulling once in a while and this is a refillable jar. So yes, it's made out of plastic, but I can refill it with a new batch of coconut oil, virgin coconut oil, whenever it's done. And I always have this on my bathroom sink. This here is my toothbrush. It's compostable, it's made out of wood. And I think that toothbrushes are one of the largest sources of waste out there that are in our oceans so I do highly suggest you to switch using into this wooden toothbrush if you haven't already and this here is my DIY toothpaste if you want to know how to make this it's also in my channel in my previous video I will also link it in the description box down below for anybody who is interested I'm actually looking for a toothpaste brand that is not available in my country yet for example I know that in the US they sell this toothpaste tubes out of aluminium and that is more recyclable than plastic um, but because it is not available in my country so I try to make my DIY toothpaste and if you're wondering whether it's safe whether it works one it's safe and two it does work and FYI I also go to the dentist frequently specifically the orthodontist because I have braces and I haven't had any complaints or any weird questions about my teeth from my orthodontist so so far so good in using this DIY toothpaste 
This here is my timer. So I usually use this sand timer whenever I brush my teeth just to know that I have brushed my teeth thoroughly. So when all of the sand comes down, it means that it's enough brushing. This here is my tongue cleaner. I always take good care of this and I've been using this for such a long time and it's still in great condition. Now this right here is super essential to have. This is a very great swap for those disposable cotton earbuds that people use so much and it creates so much waste because you don't only use once in a month, right? You have to use a new one whenever you want to clean your ears. So I would definitely highly recommend you to buy this stainless steel reusable earwax picker and it really does reduce the amount of waste you produce. Now a lot of people who are into zero waste, low waste, they use safety razors but personally I prefer to wax and the thing about safety razors is in my country I don't trust fully yet the waste management system. Um, you know how when you use a safety razor you have to replace the blades and that could hurt for example the garbage men or the waste pickers. You really need to think about the blades that you throw away in the rubbish bin like even if you wrap it somehow and it could get scattered when it goes down the chain. I don't want to hurt anybody <laughs> like especially um, there's a lot of vulnerable waste pickers in my country and I don't want that to happen so I do prefer waxing and this here is a sugar wax I love sugar waxing it doesn't feel painful when you do it and it also slows the growth of your hair and if I finish this batch I can always refill it with my DIY homemade wax if you want to know maybe how I do it comment down below and who knows in the future I will give you my recipes and how I make my DIY sugar wax and this here is the waxing strips you can actually wash them so whenever I finish using them I would wash them and also throw any gunk away in the trash can and here is the spatula to put on the wax onto any body part where I want to get rid of the hair <laughs> This here is my kit on whenever I want to make my DIY facial masks. There is a spatula to mix it all together and there is this cute little brush to swipe it onto my face. And there's this little bowl and also this little measuring spoons. Super cute! So whenever I want to make something simple and quick, I just pop it in there, smash it up and swap it on my face. Now let's go into the bathroom. This one here I use on a daily basis. It's made out of honey and also oat. It smells so so good and it makes my skin super soft. I love this. And when I want some scrubbing and a little bit of a more thorough cleanse, I use this one here. This one is a mix of a few things. I forgot but definitely there's oats and some nuts in there. And because this has a more scrubbing effect, I only use this once or twice a week. And these two are just the bomb. Oh, I love it. And usually uh, for my soaps, I don't put it near the shower area because I don't want it to get, you know, easily soggy when it touches the water from the overhead shower. So I usually put my soap after I've used it. I put my soap in that drawer there, just right here. when I wash my hair, of course all of this comes off, obviously. <laughs> anyway, um, I use a shampoo bar. This is a zero waste shampoo bar that I love. It smells amazing and it also suits my scalp and also my hair. So I'm really, really happy with that. And again, with soaps, especially for shampoo bars, you really need to find something that really suits your hair condition and also your scalp condition because it really does uh, determine whether it will make you feel comfortable in using it or not. And to accompany this shampoo bar, I also use this apple cider vinegar hair rinse. I actually prefer to use this more than a conditioner. It makes my 
my hair soft and it also makes my hair shinier and it does help with dandruff as well usually after I use my shampoo bar oops. <laughs> Usually after I use my shampoo bar, I use this after rinsing So I would rinse my hair out and get all the soap out of my scalp and my hair strands And then I would put this on top So I would leave this in my hair and just hair dry it afterwards A fun fact about how Indonesians go to the bathroom So we don't really use toilet paper in general We actually prefer to use these spray jet things it has a similar uh, function to a bidet but still in my house I provide toilet paper just in case but I don't really use toilet paper because I do prefer using the water jet spray it just feels more clean afterwards you should really try it, you know who knows that you will really change your mind it just gives a more cleaner and hygienic feel afterwards so this is like the portable bidet and this is life changing See? <laughs> of course, you know, you don't spray it in that direction You spray it uh, inside of the toilet after you do your whatever And by the way, this is more environmentally friendly than using toilet paper Because you're simply using water and you have no paper waste after you go to the loo This hanging here, this is my dry brush that I use after I take a shower and the unique thing is that it has two sides of the head so this side is for like massaging your body and this one is for dry brushing or you can even use it as a wet brush but I use it as a dry brush Last but not least, a special mention I haven't shown earlier I present to you this long-lasting, safe, zero-waste alternative to the usual store-bought deodorant This is a polished alum stone or batu tawas in my native language it's a natural mineral salt and yes, it's also widely used here to purify water Alum stones or potassium alum crystals by the way It's been used since way back, since the times of ancient Egypt, ancient China and also by Indonesia's long gone ancestors It occurs naturally as a sulfate mineral called alum K and it has natural antibacterial properties which inhibit the growth of odor causing bacteria and also could heal small cuts and scrapes for example from razor cuts or waxing now even though its name has alum in it it doesn't contain aluminium chlorohydrate that blocks sweat glands like usual store-bought deodorants nor is it similar to it so it isn't really an antiperspirant but remember our body sweats for a natural purpose anyway to regulate body temperature yeah how I use it after I take a shower while my body is also still damp I water this under the tap sink and swipe it under my armpits And that's it! There will be very tiny particles from the stone that will do its job to the pits And don't forget to store this in a cool dry place afterwards Are you ready to try and go zero waste or low waste? See you in the next video.